Hey guys, Crypto Dad here again, and today I'm going to talk about preserving your crypto legacy. And this time we'll talk about our hardware wallets. So let's get going. Okay, so this will be the last part of my series about preserving your crypto legacy uh, or passing on your uh, cryptocurrency assets to your family and friends. If you haven't seen the uh, intro video and some of the other sections that I've done, I encourage you to check the uh, cards uh, that you can access at the top of the corner of my video and uh, take a look at those as well. So we talked about the fact that there is no way for a lawyer or a judge to unlock my crypto assets uh, if I'm not around. Uh, they can't do it with a court order. They need physical access to the wallets because they're protected by cryptography and passwords and all of those other things. So we talked before about uh, our cryptocurrency accounts and uh, the way to access, access those. Um, and I talked about giving your family access to your phone, your passwords, your passcodes, um, your account names and passwords, and all of those things. Today we're gonna really get to the crux of the problem and talk about our cryptocurrency hardware wallets that we have stored on our computer. So let's jump in. Okay, so uh, we've talked about this document, and uh, now this document can be uh, a file, and uh, I, of course I don't recommend keeping it on your computer, so uh, we've talked about where to keep this document. Now the super secure way to do this would be to write it down so that it, has, it hasn't touched your computer at all. Uh, but that's a bit tedious and maybe hard to read for your family and friends. Uh, your second next best thing would be to type it up as some kind of document so that it's readable and then uh, print it out and put it somewhere safe. Uh, the other alternative, which I think is uh, balances security and convenience, is to store it as a digital document but on a flash drive and keep that flash drive in a secure location. You may want to have multiple copies of it. Uh, and then uh, we've talked about, uh, I've had some criticisms that said, you know, never reveal your private keys to anyone, anytime, ever, 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 ever. Well, uh, that's fine if you're planning on taking your crypto assets with you. But if you'd like to share uh, what you've accumulated uh, with your loved ones, then you're gonna have to give them some kind of access. So if you don't wanna just put it on a flash drive and give it to your wife or your parents or your siblings for safekeeping, then you could probably leave it with a lawyer and in the case of your demise or incapacitation, have some sort of legal mechanism that gives them access to this document. So uh, in today's case, I'm just gonna go through the document with you and I have it as a, uh, a Word document so that the uh, external links are uh, going to show up and look nice. All right, and then I can demonstrate to you what they are. So our first agenda item on the agenda here is our hardware wallet. And uh, this is the Ledger Nano S. Now, not all of you have a Ledger Nano S, but those of you that do uh, are familiar with these items here. Uh, so we're going to specify that we have a hardware wallet and that it's a Ledger Nano S and that it contains some uh, cryptocurrencies. Now, uh, if you've uh, been involved in some sort of accident and uh, your family uh, gets this document, let's hope that, you've, uh, that they know where you keep this Ledger Nano S. You might even wanna put this uh, information in the document itself. So you could have in the document, you know, in the top drawer of the file cabinet or wherever you normally store your Ledger Nano S. Uh, 
It doesn't necessarily have to be in the most secure location in your house under normal circumstances because you've got the passcode and the other uh, security mechanisms that protect the cryptocurrency on there. So this document uh, would list what's in there, uh, the, how much uh, cryptocurrency is in there, the different types. And this is just an example. You may have a lot more different types of cryptocurrency on your Ledger Nano. So you would just want to let them know what's on there so they don't miss anything. And uh, we've got the PIN. The PIN code uh, will allow them access to the Ledger Nano S and the wallets that are on there. Also, I've included the recovery phrase of the Ledger Nano S. Perhaps they can't find Ledger Nano S. In this case, this recovery phrase can be used to restore any Ledger Nano S to the state of your wallet. And I've got some good videos on what you know the recovery phrase is and how it works. So suffice that to say. Now down here, I've got some links uh, that explain how the Ledger Nano works. So uh, let's see how we do this. I think we control click here. So if your family and friends aren't familiar with how the Ledger Nano S is, you want to give them uh, links to the guides on how it works. So uh, the, they'll be able to figure this out. And then I've also got a link to one of their guides on how you restore from seed. Pretty clear cut way uh, so that in case of emergency, they'll have access to the cryptocurrency on the Ledger Nano S. All right. So that's the Ledger Nano S, and now we're going to go uh, to the computer access. I'm assuming you probably have uh, some cryptocurrency stored on your computer. I talked in a previous video that about that most of the newer users of cryptocurrency most likely only have crypto stored in, say, Coinbase or another uh, cryptocurrency exchange account. But some of you more savvy people probably have some crypto stored in some uh, wallets on your computer. So the first thing that we need to do in our document is let our family and friends know how to get access to our computer. So in my case, uh, I'm giving them access to a, a Windows machine. So uh, I have a pin on my Windows machine. Mind you, this is just an example. This is not the pin to my Windows machine. Uh, and then uh, you should give them the pin to the machine and in case there's a problem, uh, give them the uh, name of your Microsoft account and the password so that they will be able to get gain access to your computer. That should be enough for them. Now we go to the desktop wallets that you most likely have some crypto in. And in this example, I've got the Electrum Bitcoin wallet and I've got the amount of Bitcoin stored in that Electrum Bitcoin wallet and I've mentioned the location. Uh, it's a win Electrum is a Windows app. Uh, in this case, like uh, for example, you can just go over here and I believe it's an E and uh, you know, they can launch Electrum on your computer. Now uh, I've included the name of the wallet. This is the default name of uh, the wallet and the password. So uh, they'll need the password to gain access to this cryptocurrency wallet. And then once again, I've included the seed here uh, in case they don't, are, they aren't able to access my computer. And I've included a link to uh, how you restore from seed uh, for the Electrum Bitcoin wallet. So I'll check that out. Mind you, it, you may not be using Electrum uh, Bitcoin wallet. You may not. Uh, I'm just giving you an example of uh, a common cryptocurrency wallet. All right. And then uh, in this case, I've included uh, an IOTA wallet. Now, you may not have an IOTA wallet. You might have uh, a Verge wallet or, you know, or Cardano wallet or different types of wallets. But I'm just giving an example. Uh, once again, we talk about uh, how much is stored there so they have an idea. And uh, for the IOTA, there's an 81 character seed that is available. And uh, for those of you who uh, would like to run out and try to sign into uh, an IOTA wallet using this seed, it's just a random seed that I generated from my keyboard. Uh, so it may work. I don't know. Somebody may have generated it, but the odds are pretty slim. 
And then I've got a link on how to use the IOTA wallet, how to set it up. All right, and then uh, the, the last example that I have is the Ethereum wallet. So uh, I've got uh, how much Ether is in there, uh, how to launch the wallet from Windows, the password for the wallet, and then uh, where the key store backup is. So uh, the Ethereum wallet has a different mechanism for backup and uh, it's uh, a key store file and I've got a list here of where it's stored. Okay, and then the last two items there are uh, links to guides on uh, the Ethereum website and how to download and install the Ethereum wallet. And uh, that's the guide. So uh, once again, uh, your document may look different, uh, but this is a good example of the kind of document that you need to provide to give your family and friends access to your cryptocurrency if you are unable to do so. You want to have it detailed oriented and you can either leave it where they can find it or uh, m create some sort of legal mechanism that will allow them to gain access to it if uh, you're not around. So uh, that's it guys. So I hope you enjoyed this video series. I hope you enjoyed this particular video. If you like my videos, be sure and uh, click the thumbs up button. Give me a like. If you would like to subscribe to my channel, I would really appreciate it. Uh, and when you subscribe, there's a bell next to the subscribe button, which will allow you to be alerted whenever I post a new video. Once again, thanks for joining me uh, and hope to see you again soon.